Hey y'all, welcome into today's video. We're gonna be decluttering my bookshelf behind me and I have been wanting to do this for a while. Um, I am going on a leave of absence and I'm not going back to school. It's gonna be my way out. My bookshelf has a ton of books that I bought for school for one reason or the other. Books that were, books I thought would be useful for later. Uh, grad school as well as books as I books that I was buying to build out my academic library just about every prof has a library in their office and I was starting to build mine out um, even if I finish my PhD which I probably will not I will not be working in academia so I do not need that kind of library so it feels like my books have been taunting me because I don't use them and like every time I look at them it's like just a bad, I don't know, just a negative reminder. So I have the goal of decluttering all the books that I'm no longer using, no longer needing, which is pretty hard. I've, I, I haven't really been able to do it yet. That's gonna be the goal. Also though, a lot of you have asked for school related content, either like what's my dissertation, what books am I reading for school? And also people have been asking for history book recommendations for me. So a lot of you have been asking me for that kind of content and I hope that the intro to this video kind of makes it at least somewhat clear as to why that's not gonna be happening anytime soon. So I'm gonna bring into the bookshelf, here we go. And I just, I wanna, I guess, I just wanna start and get these things out of the way. So I kind of, I want to go shelf by shelf, but there's, if something's kind of sticking out at me, I'll grab it. And as I say that, this thing, it's like right at my personal eye level, is just really sticking out to me. So let's bring it down here. This I got, and you know what? While we're at it, I know I have a sequel. This one, it's the same book. These are both Women's America. I I bought them for class and kept them because I thought they'd be great for my academic library. Um, these have been kind of hard to declutter because it kind of feels like I'm saying that these things aren't important when that's just not the case at all. So I'm gonna declutter both of them. I'm also not an Americanist. I don't really need much American content, even if I was in academia. So I can say goodbye to those two. So let's go to the top. Um, this one is recent, well in the last two years, which is a good book, I liked it. The Marketplace of Revolution is actually a really interesting argument. I, this book I think is like 20 years old at this point. I, I do actually, I was thinking about this the other day and would consider rereading it. Amazing book. This one here, actually, this one was given to me by a prof. I needed it to teach. I'm going to try and return it to the school because if they don't need to buy it for somebody else, then that's um, a plus. I'm not going to reread it. So that's a buy. Oh, this one is maybe the hardest thing on my shelf to declutter. Let's pull it down. First of all, this is a beast. This is like 800 pages. Oh yeah, this is at least, what, 589? I'm not even at the end. This is a woman's health book. Um, it's American. Our Bodies Ourselves was really revolutionary when it first started publishing in the 70s. I did my undergraduate project on this. Like I went to go to the Our Bodies Ourselves archives in Boston. And this was such a pivotal part of my life. And like this was a really significant feminist health publication in the 70s. Um, and if we like go through it, but I was just flipping through this off camera for a second. Um, and there's like, this is genuinely like a um, 
a health book. I'm going to show you something that might be, um, I don't know, TMI. Like there's actually like medical, lots of useful medical information. And it talks about, like it talks about so much. Like there is genuinely so much information in here. This is all about like IUDs, what they look like. And I think that, well, one of the reasons why this was so pivotal when it was um, published back in the 70s is that a lot of women had to rely on doctors for health information. And a lot of women talked about just like their negative experiences with doctors being belittled or not taken seriously. This book gave women access to medical information for like the first time and dispelling myths and like giving women knowledge. So it, like, I don't know, this book represents so much from my life like just the time of my life. Like I spent three, two or three years researching and writing different projects on this, but I have not used this ever. I have never opened this. Um, I, I think I might have used this for that project, but like this is a 2011 edition, which at the time was the most recent edition. I don't know if they've released anything else since. And in my opinion, it kind of feels like even though I don't use it, it says something about me if I declutter it. Like, it, f it feels like more than the other two, like I'm saying that this information is not important, it is not relevant or significant, when that's not it. I just, do I need to own this though? Like, if I don't use it and it's not serving a purpose in my life, do I need to own it? I don't know, maybe what I need to do is see how easy it is. No, but this is not even about, I was, I was gonna say maybe I see how easy it is to get this information online, but it's not about the information. Okay, I need your help in the comments. I I have to put this in a maybe pile. I feel genuinely so torn about it. Um. Yeah, I'm putting it in the maybe in the maybe pile over here. I need your thoughts about this in the comments. Leave them below please. Okay, so we are moving on. I have to stand on a stool to get up here. So back to the bookshelf. The next book I wanted to clutter is this one. This is Give Me a Liberty by Eric Foner. This is a pretty classic American textbook from my understanding. I don't need American history out of all the kinds of history. So this one's going to go to I think actually that might be it for the top row. This book here I bought out of my own interest, have not read. This is actually really good. Um, food history book. It's by Camille Bejean, Taste of a Nation. Now on to the next bookshelf. Oh, this guy is sticking out. So just going in order here, I have two Italian books. One of them is an Italian English dictionary, which is actually very useful. This book on the other hand, I don't know if I want. This is a verb book. I'm going to have to put this down so you can see. This book is literally uh, this is what I use for my Italian language exam. And this book literally gives you the infinitive at the front, occupare, and then you have the definition to occupy, and then you have all of the different verb tenses. You have singular over here, and then pull here for both sides. There's what, 14 tenses, 15 with the imperative. And in the translation, like in the tenses, it does not say what they mean. It just tells you how to do them. So you should, like, I guess the point is if you need a book like this, you should know that kind of information. My question about this is that I only took that, I only got this to pass my Italian language exam and I only needed to pass the language exam for formality in the course. I don't actually really need 
to know Italian language that thoroughly. So I think that I, I think I should declutter it because I don't, I generally don't think I will need this in the future because it's a study aid. And if I needed a quick reference, like on the fly, I would just use Google Translate. So I think I'm gonna declutter this and this is like a pretty chonky book. Back up, I am gonna keep this dictionary. There's a chance I might need it in the future, but do I keep this because it's a chance? It's really big. If I keep this one, I know I have another one down here. This guy. I definitely don't need to keep the smaller one if I have the thorough one. So that can go. Also, vote on whether you think I should keep this. I wasn't planning on decluttering it. Do you know when you have a declutter and there's things you know in your mind that need to go? This was not one of them. Okay, so next up we have this book here. This is another textbook. Um, like this is like in its heart a textbook and while there is some good information on it I don't need a textbook this one is just really hard wow looks like I did actually do some work here um, this is a transnational approach okay I just need to declutter this I do not need a textbook okay this one I bought for food studies 2019 that's fine this was a good book I haven't read this one yet I haven't read this one yet it's any other way how Toronto got queer I bought this for comps but never got to it. So that's that row. Let's now go down to this one. Um, everything here are like more like things I purchased for myself for fun. These two here are the only school books. This one, this is also a textbook and this has like a lot of definitions and like really basic information. One of the things I was struggling about with this book is that this like this has good good definitions for things like liberal feminism, Marxist feminism, maternal feminism, um, and talking about their origins, where they come from, like how they different from each other, like what their core beliefs are. This one is even more base basic than the other book. I mean, different forms of power. Um, and I've held on to this because I thought this would be great to give to students who are maybe just learning about it for the first time. But ultimately, I've never done that. And I've had students write gender and feminist kind of papers. So I've never done it and will not in the future. And the other, the other thing is that um, I actually had a student recently who tried to make this poll who basically was trying to make an argument about maternal feminism that was completely unsubstantiated. And it was in that moment that I thought about this book because I was like, oh, do I need to pull from this to see um, what the dates are? But I already have that in my memory. Like I was able to recall that information. And so I was thinking about some of the other definitions and like I can define what Marxist feminism is and like how it's different from liberal feminism and so I guess ultimately what I'm trying to say is that this is just a little basic from where I'm at and not as useful as it once was so I can declutter this one okay this book is kind of difficult it's the empire within post-colonial thought and political activism in 1960s Montreal. This is like a really important book in the field. I probably wouldn't read it again. And I know this person like in real life. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna have to put this in the maybe pile. I'm sorry, Shauna Mills. <laughs> okay, 
let's get down. Oh, by the way, this is my thesis, my master's thesis. I actually, I didn't write a project. My master's, I actually wrote a dissertation. I had um, a meeting and I had to defend it and everything. And I've read it recently and it's kind of hilarious. Okay, now onto this row. Let's, this one, oh, this is a classic um in the field a hungering for america italian irish and jewish foodways when you're do when you're talking about food and migration this is a book that you have to respond to whether your book is about um these kinds of uh, european foodways or not this is like one of the pivotal in the field and like this has done some good for italian foodways but also doesn't totally hold up um a lot it doesn't totally hold up over time. I don't know why I'm saying this because I'm gonna keep it. I do genuinely like it. Um, oh, this is a really great slim book. It's called Aqueduct. Adele Perry is a really great Canadianist. Um, and if you're interested in Canadian history, this is a really slim volume. Well, not just Canadian history. This is um, also indigenous histories and like resource management and control. This is another great book on immigration. Oh, this one, Mother Camp. Female impersonators in America. This is like a historical book. Um, it, well, it's more like a primary source because it's from the 70s and it talks about female impersonators. Love this. Put her back in. Okay, this book called Visions. This one um, is actually a history reader that the prof for the course put together. Um, it's like a primary source reader. I don't, I don't need it. And this is also pre-confederation. If I was staying in academia, this would be helpful to keep on the shelf. But because I'm, I've never, I've never reached for this. Oh, this guy is tough. Okay, before we get to that. Let me actually just get to this one. This is a book on the French Revolution. This is not all, this is not my time period, my country. Like I don't really have all that much interest in the French Revolution. Like I've read it. I know all the basics. Like I'm gushy. This book here, The Houses of History. This is like basic types of history and like teaches you about historiography and even is like it is a historiographical book as well like it talks about empirical history and then also different kinds of history like marxist history feminist history it's kind of a mediocre book it, like it wasn't great um it was good to talk about like like the annals school that okay that was useful marxist historians i don't know this is I'm wondering if I can even keep this because, or if I can even give this away because, like, did you, there's a lot of notes. <sighs> but I don't need it. I don't need it. Born for Liberty by Sarah M. Evans. I, I'm not totally sure if this is considered a classic or not. Um but it's very popular in the field. Uh, I, I do have interest in women's history and this is written much like a book, but it's kind of a survey. I have never, I, I think I got this in my second year or my third year, which would have been like 2014 or 15, somewhere in there. And I've never once read it again. I, I have, like I forgot about it and I see it and I'm not particularly drawn to it, so can declutter her. Okay, back to gatekeepers. This, let me just put it down. This book is written by a very prominent Canadian historian. She does work on food and Italian immigration. In this book, okay, this book has like a really simple argument about how it talks about who was gatekeeping like the Canadian borders and Canadian culture and they it talks all about different kinds of gatekeepers and how they gatekeep even from things like food um 
it's like it's a really simple argument and it's actually kind of expansive it doesn't just talk about like one kind of immigration like immigrant group it's everybody talks so highly of this book and i just i wasn't a fan like it's an interesting argument and like you know it was definitely true but i just wasn't as big of a fan of it as i wanted to be so do i keep this for reference crap okay i'm putting her in the maybe pile i just some of this like this is fairly new like i got this in 2020 ah okay another vote okay the last thing on this shelf i want to declutter is 1984 by george orwell i bought this to read because it's a classic and have never read it and i do not have interest in reading it i know the general premise and it's also on the back i do like a good dystopian novel but i'm just not into reading it um like to me something has to be like okay if the only reason i want to read this is because it's a classic that's not a good enough reason anymore one day i might want this but i can also get it from the library i don't need to own this so bye okay now onto the last shelf this is like a lot of workbooks agendas these kinds of things um oh my goodness okay I do read, um, these are forks over knives. I do actually use these and consult these on the regular. I kept the Real Simple magazine. I got a subscription. A couple of, I think these are from 2018 and 19. I have never once referenced these. I'm only showing you the top because my address is on the bottom. And I have so many but I've never once referenced them. I'm going to put these aside. So I kept these for the recipes, but I have never used them. So I'm going to look through them and see if there's any I want to keep for the recipes. If not, I will declutter them. The other two things I want to declutter are these two. I kept my Italian books together. I've taken different courses over the years. yeah i don't i don't need this activity book i kept it because i paid money for it not a good reason to keep it this is also from my very first year of university sentieri i don't need this i kept it because there were some like good study tools i don't need it i've never consulted it uh yeah so she can go I think I'm pretty sure that's it. Look at this. I bought Christmas cards and never opened them. Well, that's great. Okay, so that's everything. Okay, so let's count and see how many I was able to declutter. So there's two here and then, and then the third here. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So 14 are for sure declutters. Yay. These three are the maybes. So you have The Empire Within by Sean Mills, Gay Keepers by Franca Yacoveta, and Our Bodies Ourselves by the Boston Women's Health Book Collective. Let me know your thoughts on the comments down below. Well, the authors shouldn't really matter. I mean, I talked all about um, why I want to get rid of these books. I have not read any of them since I did whatever work I had to do for school with them. Some of them are newer than others. Gatekeepers is the newest. And part of me, like, is for all three of them, but, more, but I think the strongest for our bodies ourselves is that almost like sacrilegious, blasphemous, to get rid of like such strong feminist literature. 
And that's the thing with so many of these. It, it feels like I'm saying that these works are not important. Also, is keeping something because of the image I want to cultivate for myself or the image I want to portray worth it? No. Just because I've liked something and it has served me doesn't mean I actually need to own it. And I have to get that through my head. Decluttering this does not mean it's unimportant or that I think it's unimportant. But just because I like it does not mean and it has served me doesn't mean I have to own it. So thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me as I decluttered my book collection today. I hope you learned some things about what I've been reading, what I like. Let me know if you have any questions about any of the authors or books that you saw here today in the comments. Please, let me know your thoughts. <laughs> um, thanks again for watching and I hope to see you again around here soon. Bye.